Good morning. Early morning, I received a comment from Ms. Zubaida Malik. You can see uh, her comment. And she is confused in these three terminologies, which is spherical equivalent in normal prescription. Second one is rule of thumb in JCC, which is the last step of Jackson cross cylinder. And the next one is spherical equivalent of Jackson cross cylinder. So I'll explain. I have made, I have recorded, I have recorded uh, three different videos. You can see the thumbnails on your screen. The first one is uh, the spherical equivalent in normal prescription, right? And the second one is the spherical equivalent of Jackson cross cylinder. And the third one you can see on your screen, which is uh, power refinement and spherical equivalent, which is actually, uh, which is actually a rule of thumb in the Jackson cross cylinders procedure. So in this video, I will compile all of these three videos because students always make mistakes in these three procedures they they'll get confused while they are performing spherical equivalent in a normal prescription or they are performing jackson cross cylinder and uh, extracting rule of thumb and while they are performing the uh, spherical equivalent of the jackson cross cylinder so one by one we will explain this process first of all we will learn about the spherical equivalent in normal prescriptions and we will make differences between all of these right so first of all let's learn about the spherical equivalent suppose we have a prescription which is written on whiteboard spherical correction is minus four cylindrical correction is minus one and axis of the cylinder are 90 degree right so we are going to take spherical equivalent you know that why we take spherical equivalent in spherical equivalent we actually remove removing our cylindrical correction which is you can say which is uh, uh, somehow not comfortable to the patient right if a patient uh, you prescribe a patient with this prescription minus four sapphire with minus one cylinder at 90 degree and your patient is not comfortable with the cylindrical correction right then you will take spherical equivalent you will remove the cylindrical correction and that removal of or residual of the cylinder you will add algebraically in the spherical correction right and you will prescribe this prescription to the patient which is without the cylindrical correction right so now we will learn that how or you can say this is contact lens prescription of a patient or you can say this is spectacles correction of a patient right and he or she needs contact lens on urgent basis but when you see the prescription you find minus one cylinder but this prescription with minus four spherical minus one cylinder at 90 degree this prescription with the cylinder is not available in your stock but he or she needs on urgent basis then you will take spherical equivalent and how we have to take half of the cylinder this is minus one this is total cylinder of the prescription we will take half of this prescription of cylindrical pre prescription what is the half of the one is 0.5 right and we will adjust we will add this half of the cylinder in the spherical correction right so but problem is where students always mistakes you have to be very careful on this point right we have we will take half of the cylinder which is 0.5 and when we will add this half of the cylinder in spherical correction algebraically we will move with the same sign in capital I am writing with the same sign right when you are taking spherical equivalent in normal prescription we are not talking about the Jackson cross cylinder and blah blah right we are talking about the spherical equivalent in normal prescription right so minus 4 with minus 1 cylinder the half of the cylinder is 0.5 we have added half of the cylinder in the spherical correction with the same sign the sign with the cylinder is minus 1 we take half of the cylinder and we put the same sign with the half of the cylinder and algebraically we will add this prescription this cylindrical prescription into spherical prescription so when we will add minus 4 is spherical we will add minus 0 0.50 half of the cylinder and you know that minus and minus plus right so 4 and 0.5 will be 4.5 what about the sign of the cylinder or sign of the new prescription you know that the bigger value is with the minus sign so we will put minus sign so in this case minus 4.50 spherical 
is our spherical equivalent right hope this is clear but one point you have to keep it in mind that in which prescriptions we can take spherical equivalent remember if your cylinder if the prescription in the cylinder is up to minus one right then we can take spherical equivalent right if the cylinder is more than one like it's minus 1.5 it's minus 2 3 4 5 we are not going to take spherical equivalent in those prescriptions keep it in mind right if your cylinder is up to minus 1 right then we can take spherical equivalent of the prescription hope this procedure is very clear and now we are going to move another prescription right spherical equivalent of jackson cross cylinder now right now we are going to take the spherical equivalent of a jackson cross cylinder you know very well about the jackson cross cylinder we have recorded many videos on jackson cross cylinder right so in this scenario we are going to take spherical equivalent of jackson cross cylinder suppose we have a jackson cross cylinder this is our jackson cross cylinder this is with minus sign right the axis of the minus cylinder and 45 degree apart this is axis of the plus cylinder so the power of the jackson cross cylinder is suppose this plus cylinder has 0.5 as the same minus got the same power which is 0.5 right so we have 0.5 minus cylinder and 0.5 with plus cylinder you know these are axis lines and you know very well that power of the cylinder is always 90 apart to the axis meridian right power and axis meridian are always 90 degree apart you know very well this is a common thing so as you can see the power of the jackson cross cylinder is 0.5 minus and 0.5 plus right so if we are going to make a prescription and you know that in jackson cross cylinder that cylindrical power is always double to the spherical power right if you want to make a spherical sorry jackson cross cylinder if you want to make a jackson cross cylinder on your own then you have to take power of the cylinder as double as the spherical right the cylindrical power will be always double to the spherical correction so we will prove it so suppose this is plus this is minus 0.5 this is plus 0.5 so we will take minus 0 0.5 you know that we can take any of these values as our spherical you can take plus 0 0.5 as your spherical you can take minus 0 0.5 as your spherical so i am taking minus 0 0.50 as my spherical and now to grab the cylinder i have to move from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 i have to jump i have to find the gap between two values right so when we will take a gap when we will move from 0 0.5 minus to plus 0 0.5 the gap between both of these is one you know minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 0 to 0.5 with plus is 0.5 so 0.5 and 0.5 one so the gap between minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5 is one so what about the sign of the cylinder so actually we are moving from minus to plus actually we are moving towards the plus side so answer would be the sign of the cylinder would be plus suppose the axis are 90 degree the axis could be 90 or 180 it's your choice so suppose the axis are 90 degree right so this is the prescription of the jackson cross cylinder right so that's why we take our jackson cross cylinder as a ferro cylindrical lens right because that's it this is the real prescription of the jackson cross cylinder so it takes 0.5 spherical and plus one cylinder as well so that's why jackson cross cylinder cylinder is always called as sphero cylindrical lens or toric lens right so now this is the final prescription of the jackson cross cylinder now we are taking the spherical equivalent of jcc right we are taking the spherical equivalent of the prescription of the jcc we are not performing any procedure of the jcc just we take a prescription from the jcc which is the real prescription of the jackson cross cylinder right and we are taking the spherical equivalent of the jackson cross cylinder and i have 
I have a detailed video that always the spherical equivalent of a Jackson cross cylinder is always zero, right? So we will prove it again for your ease. So half of the cylinder is one. So half would be 0.5. So as this case, we will move algebraically from half of the cylinder we will take to the spherical, right? So half of the cylinder will be added in the spherical correction and we are going to move with the same sign. So sign is with plus. So when we will take half of the cell and we'll add algebraically to the spherical correction. So minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus minus 0, right? So that's why as you can see, we have proved that spherical equivalent of the Jackson cross cylinder is zero because our spherical correction is zero. So there is no any spherical equivalent of Jackson cross cylinder, right? If you take any kind of spherical Jackson cross cylinder with the power of minus uh, uh, 0.25, with the power of 0.5, with the power of 1, 1.25, 1.5, if you take any of the Jackson cross cylinder with any power, always the spherical equivalent of the Jackson cross cylinder would be zero. And now we are going to learn another thing, another term, which is called the rule of thumb in JCC. But in this case, remember, in, in this case, both of these conditions are the same. In this condition, we take spherical equivalent of any of prescription. And this case is nothing to do with the Jackson cross cylinder, right? There is, there could be any of the prescription, like in which the cylinder would be less than or up to minus one. We can take spherical equivalent with the same case, with the same procedure. And in this case, we simply take the spherical equivalent of the Jackson cross cylinder. We didn't make any procedure. We didn't use Jackson cross cylinder. We just take prescription from the Jackson cross cylinder, that instrument. And when we, be, when we will see that, when we want to take spherical equivalent, and we will see that the spherical equivalent of JCC is zero right but now in this case this is somehow different thing in this case rule of thumb in jackson cross cylinder remember that the rule of thumb in jackson cross cylinder is part of the procedure of the jackson cross cylinder you know that we use jackson cross cylinder what is the use of the what is the function of the jackson cross cylinder the use or the function of the jackson cross cylinder is we can find axis of the cylinder we can find power of the cylinder we can correct our astigmatism subjectively with the help of the Jackson cross cylinder, right? How? This rule of thumb is in JCC is the last step of the Jackson cross cylinder procedure. Now I am talking about the procedure, right? So what is the first step? Bracketing. We always know, right? The link is in the description. You, uh, you can see, you can watch if you want. The first step was bracketing. The second step was access refinement. The second, third step was power refinement. And the last step, is rule of thumb or spherical equivalent. As I said in my video that this is not actually the spherical equivalent. This is called rule of thumb, right? This is as same with a minor difference. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's always like the spherical equivalent with a minor difference. So this is this procedure is called the rule of thumb. So suppose, minus two spherical, this is our best sphere, best VN sphere, right? And with the use of the Jackson cross cylinder, we are actually moving, we are actually increasing our minus power with, as you know that in power refinement, we always increasing the power of the cylinder until our patient get maximum visual acuity. So suppose the total power which we extracted, which we find with the help of the Jackson cross cylinder in power refinement, that is minus uh, one at 90 degree. The best corrected axis was 90 degree. With the help of the power refinement procedure, we take total cylinder minus one. And now we are going to apply rule of thumb on this prescription. Now we are performing the Jackson cross cylinder. Actually, we are performing the last step of the Jackson cross cylinder, which is rule of thumb, which is exactly the same as the spherical equivalent, but with the minor difference. And now we are talking about that minor difference, right? So what is that difference? In both of these cases, you know that we take half of the cylinder. We will take half of the cylinder. This condition is the same. So what is the half of the minus one? It's 0.5. 
the second step is the same we will add this half of the cylinder in the spherical correction the same thing like those and now what is the major difference in both of these cases we move the cylinder with the same sign but in this case we are moving the cylinder with the opposite sign right the sign of the cylinder is minus one but we will move with the opposite sign with the plus cylinder now the half of the cylinder is with the plus sign right so when our spherical correction is minus two half of the cylinder with opposite sign is plus 0 0.5 and the conclusion is when we subtract 0.5 from minus 2 the answer would be 1.5 what what about the sign the bigger values with the minus sign minus so this is our new spherical correction which is minus 1.5 so our new prescription would be minus 1.5 now we will we are going to write our cylinder or not yes we are going to write our cylinder as such right so minus 1.5 spherical with minus 1 cylinder at same x so this prescription is our new prescription which is minus 1.5 sphere which is our new prescription new spherical with the same sign with the same cylinder with the same axis as here right so the difference is in normal spherical equivalent when we are taking the normal spherical equivalent like this or like this in this case we will take half of the cylinder and we will add half of the cylinder in the spherical correction with the same sign and in both of these cases we are going to exclude the cylinder right we are going to exclude the cylinder in both of these cases so that's why the spherical correction is zero and we are going to exclude the cylinder so the answer would be zero right in this case you can see we take half of the cylinder and add in the spherical correction with the same sign but when you are performing the jackson cross cylinder you are actually uh, deter determining the you actually finding the cylindrical correction axis of the cylinder then in the procedure of the jackson cross cylinder when you will apply the rule of thumb the last step in the jackson cross cylinder right then you will take half of the cylinder and you will move to the spherical correction with the opposite sign when you will go to this side then the new prescription would be minus 1.5 right so new spherical correction is 1.5 after adding the half of the cylinder algebraically the new spherical correction is minus 1.5 and again you will write your cylindrical correction as such which is minus one cylinder at 90 degree minus one cylinder at 90 degree right because if you are going to remove this cylinder then the meaning of the jackson cross cylinder is meaningless right because with the help of the jackson cross cylinder you were going to find axis of the cylinder and power of the cylinder right so you have to put your cylinder and axis as such hope this is clear We'll see you in the next videos.